she flies. We did it. The greatest moment in any aircraft program came for the Nimrod team on the afternoon of August the 26th, as PA-1 rose majestically from the Woodford airfield. The first of three MRA-4s in build at Woodford, PA-1 and her impressive maiden flight represent the successful outcome of eight years' hard work and a major milestone on the road to producing one of the world's most capable maritime reconnaissance and attack aircraft. For everyone involved in the story so far, it's been a moment to savor and enjoy. First Flight's an excellent opportunity to recognize everyone throughout our supply chain and the many BAE sites that have been involved directly and indirectly. We've got employees all over the company who've worked on Nimrod at one time or another over the last six to ten years. In particular, we have people at Farnborough, Prestwick, Chatterton, Bruff, as well as Woodford where the airplane launched and Morton where, where it landed for first flight. So it was a great day and too many people to thank individually, but we hope with this memento we can refresh their memories and give them an opportunity to reflect on the great achievement. The customer and the company have made extraordinary contribution to keeping this program running through sometimes difficult times. Great investment in the program manifests itself not only in the training and the expertise of our people, but also in the many tools and facilities we've developed at many of the sites across the company in order to advance the state of the design and the proving we've collected in the early stages of the program. And it's thanks to these special facilities that PA-1's success in the air was largely underwritten on the ground. With rigs like the Iron Bird proving the aircraft's hydraulic systems and the FDAR and WIZA rigs running full mission simulations, designers, flight crew and the customer teams already had a very accurate preview of the first flight experience. But not all of Nimrod's recent capital and energy has been invested in the first flight effort. It isn't just about flying. We've made great progress in our project management improvements. We're tracking our earned value. We're tracking budget much better. We're working with an integrated schedule. And in the support area, we've been delivering a training system to Ken Loss where we've completed the buildings and we've delivered the first version of the training system on time under budget. A great testimony to the teamwork among the supply chain, several suppliers, and with the customer to do the installation successfully and do the checkout promptly. It was a, a real achievement. In terms of weather, August 2004 had been one of the poorest on record. But for the Nimrod team, the prospects were about to get considerably brighter. Chief test pilot, John Turner. At last, we're able to get onto the aircraft and start the real work of the, of the day. We've got a crew of four, two pilots, a flight test observer, and a cabin member in the rear to look after the aspects of, of cabin and to inspect those as we go through the flight. Walking around the aircraft, uh, for the final time, we've already completed several taxi tests and a final check of the last piece of paperwork. We get ourselves ready for this historic moment. Taxiing out, the biggest item and perhaps the biggest worry that the crew had during this phase was the weather conditions. In order to complete a first flight, we did require that we could complete everything without penetrating cloud. And as you'll see, the skies at that period, and indeed for most of that afternoon, had been dark across um, the green fields around Woodford. Indeed, even lining up for takeoff, we still were not sure whether we would have the right conditions that we needed for this particular flight. Ironic that after so much effort to get all the design and everything else ready, the weather appeared to conspire against us. However, with a gap finally appearing in the right place that enabled us to complete our planned profile of a spiral climb in the overhead at Woodford, we were able to make a takeoff. We 
the tape was a little early. However, the aircraft lifted and clearly really wanted to fly, and we spent the first few moments just familiarizing ourselves with the pitch controls. And I'm pleased to say that everything was exactly as we'd expected. We paused for a moment to allow the chase to join up with us, completed the spiral and then, from overhead Woodford at 10,000 feet, set off to the North Wales area where we planned to conduct the high-risk portion of our flight. One of the important aspects of the test flight, bearing in mind the aircraft wings have never been under aerodynamic loads before, was to get the undercarriage up, and indeed from a test pilot point of view, to get the undercarriage down again. But the undercarriage up portion gave us a chance to investigate the handling qualities of the aircraft as the operational pilot will see it for most of the time. High control forces have been a recognised issue for us on this programme, but it's interesting to note that although we did experience those and are currently in the process of reducing them, actually handling the aircraft resulted in whether it be rolling to established bank angles, rolling out of turns to establish headings, nothing above an HQR handling quality level of three, which is really gratifying for the designers. With the gear extended again, the flight deck indications show that it was fully down and locked, but it is always reassuring to have a visual check from outside. As well as checking the aircraft handling, we spent some time investigating each of the aircraft integrated systems to ensure that they were operating at optimum, and indeed to reassure ourselves that we had a, had a good aircraft for the final recovery. This included checks of the radio system, and the NAV system and the FMS, and indeed the flight deck displays turned out to be exactly as expected. Finally, we were able to prepare for what was for us the most important and indeed the principal aim of the whole flight to put the aircraft back on the ground. Configured for an approach and a practice first to look at the trim settings and the control forces, finally accompanied by the chase aircraft we were able to make an approach and flare the aircraft into a gentle touchdown and thereafter revert very much to the processes that we've been practicing all week on our taxi tests. Indeed we use the occasion as another check of great performance and to take more data out of the aircraft and right up to the point of actual shutdown then this was very much a data gathering and a working exercise for all of us. Indeed very much up to the point of putting the part brake on all of us on the aircraft have been busily engaged in carrying out the activities and it was only with the part brake on and the aircraft finally stationary that we realised First of all, how well she performed, and also how important an occasion this was for the program. Indeed, we were conscious as we finished the final checks how many people there were waiting to greet us once we finally stepped outside. First flight was coincident with the Olympics, and having watched so many athletes wear their flags proudly, I thought it would be a good idea to have a built-in caption for many of the shots. As I stood waiting for the aircraft with Simon Howison, the technical director from Air Systems, I was glad I had my overcoat and the flag because even though it was August, it was a pretty cold day. It was a pretty long wait for the crew to come out of the airplane, but having waited this long for first flight, it's not too long to wait. He did most of the work. Great job. Thanks, thanks. Well done, guys. Good job, Harry. We decided we like another 18, please, to start with. It was the test pilot's dream first flight. It was quite boring. It's, it actually turned out very much as we practiced it. The aircraft didn't bring any surprises in, in the flight. We, we worked our way through the schedule and as I said, actually, it was, it was quite boring. It's a great aeroplane, though, so don't take that message the wrong way. The aircraft works really well. We've already seen it leaps off the ground. The handling qualities are actually very much as we expected, so our simulators did a good job there. 
it's actually far better than the simulators in a number of areas, which is really reassuring. And it means that once it's in service, the RF are really going to love it. It was a very good feeling when the wheels came back down again. <laughs> the preparation and, and, the amount, and the number of people that are involved, I mean, you only have to see by the number of people outside the aircraft in the startup and those seeing us off, and indeed those that have been here to welcome us back in. There are so many people involved in the, in the programme, and for all of them, moving the aircraft to here really represents the major step forward, I think. And it's something that they can all be proud of. I mean, we're just pleased that we're back on the ground, but everyone can take real pride in what it is that we've achieved today, what they've all achieved today. Well, the way, from what we could tell on the radio, you went straight through the test schedule, and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we didn't, didn't have to go back for any points. It no, all seemed it was to work. Exactly like going through the tests that we did on the FTAR and the practices. So, and that's pretty really useful. But it, it was. I, I mean, Harry is complaining because he's in the back to sort out any problems in the cabin, no and he didn't have anything to do. <laughs> no drama. So he feels unemployed. We can sack him now. No, ninety-nine percent off. That's right. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> Apart from reading the checklist. Yeah. No, it's great. No. So this is a very special day for me. You don't get many days like this in your career. We're lucky because we work in an industry where you still get to build things. And I know most of the people that work for me on this project shuffle papers all day, so do I. But not too many people in the world that get to actually make things. The job of making the most of PA1's future flights will in no small part be down to the support crew who welcomed her to Wharton and are looking forward to operating the aircraft from now on. I was absolutely delighted. Um, it's been a long time coming and delighted to see it here at Wharton. It was absolutely beautiful to see it flying over the airfield for the first time. Um, I won't say a tear came in my eye, but uh, it was very, very heartwarming. I feel quite proud really that we've actually uh, got the aircraft in the air after a, such a, a long time of uh, working on it, you know. And I worked at Woodford and at FR Aviation in the early days, so I've seen it coming through from, from the start really, you know, so uh, it's quite momentous really to see the finished product, you know, but a lot of work still to go, you know, so we're getting ourselves ready for that challenge now. It's been a marvellous day, it has, from, um, from first thing this morning, getting the aircraft out ready to come. It was always on the cards for it to come today. The weather itself played a little trick, but it cleared up nicely in the afternoon and it flew wonderfully. And some of us were lucky enough to see it take off and land as well, which was pretty good. Yeah. We gain a great deal of credibility by having a flying product. In the maritime patrol world, we're the first to fly in this new generation. We celebrate first flight because we deserve to celebrate. It's a wonderful achievement, but it's not the end, it's the beginning. We have a flight test program to continue with two more airplanes that will be added to that. There are several more software releases planned and improvements to the hardware as we move forward. There's design to do, and it's not just design for the hardware, there's design for the production system and design for support system that will be serving the Royal Air Force for 30 years. We've got to focus on the customer requirements, plenty of work to do. First flight is a demonstration of maturity that's hugely important both for the company and for ourselves helps give us the confidence we need to continue to invest in the programme. Absolutely critical achievement. We've got to get the second aircraft and the third aircraft up to time and schedule. And whilst we do that, we've got to make sure that we get closer to having an understanding of what price and what design maturity is what we require for the future. So on both fronts, commercial and technical, we've got to continue to make achievement a routine. The Nimrod program is a very important part of BAE System's immediate and long-term future, as evidenced by new chairman Dick Olver's recent visit to Woodford, in which he expressed his appreciation and admiration for the entire team's effort and accomplishments. With a highly successful first flight under its belt, that team can look forward to further challenges and more great days ahead. <laughs>